there is this ecosystem that's growing now where people are actually confusing real and fake news, especially if they see it online. This post-truth culture that we're living in has real costs to the people who are victimized by those who come up with these theories and themes. People have suffered because of false news that's being spread online. I have about eight different daily digests that come into my inbox every morning from different Facebook pages and other things that we've started tracking over time. And I scan hyperpartisan stuff from people who tend to propagate misinformation. It's basically just like starting your morning bathing in internet garbage is pretty much the deal. I have been looking at false stories since 2014. There were a handful of journalists and researchers who were interested in this stuff, but it wasn't what was the main focus of the world. And in the span of a few months, that completely changed at the end of 2016 with Trump's victory. What we found was the core key time before Election Day, the fake stories got way more engagement than the real news stories about the election. And as soon as everybody, journalists, politicians, researchers, started scratching the surface, they were like, holy crap, this is, look at what's here. And then right after the election, we had Pizzagate, somebody walking into a DC pizzeria with a rifle and firing it off, and realizing that that was a result of this person consuming conspiracies and misinformation. I think that freaked a lot of people out. My restaurant, I try to be like, everyone's invited, just have a good time, play ping pong, eat some great food. Families and kids are the people who like it the most because it's like, it's fun, they can run around. Come ping pong, it's a fixture here in Washington. Everyone knows this restaurant. People come from other parts of Washington to have pizza here. We do have some politically connected people that come in here, and that is just something that happens. I mean, I have CNN news anchors who have been eating here for years. But what Common is about is this is a safe space for people to come in and be themselves. We host shows for local bands, queer bands. I think that one of the nice things about Common is that there's space here for queer folks to be part of the identity of the restaurant. I had this party for the 10-year anniversary. Everyone was invited, and we had the uh, Attorney General of the United States, and like Congress people, and like kids, and the uh, musicians and artists. And that was in the end of October 2016. I looked at it at one moment, and I just thought, wow, like we've really created something here. Like, this place is special. Uh, and then quickly after that, we were slammed with this year plus long endless uh, conspiracy theory. John Podesta, who's Hillary Clinton campaign chairman, his emails are hacked and they get uploaded online and a lot of conspiracy theorists start crawling to them. And based on these emails, they spin up this crazy conspiracy theory about Comet Ping Pong. People on pro-Trump forums start going through John Podesta's emails and they see these references to pizza. Now these are pretty innocuous references we need to get pizza for the campaign volunteers, that kind of stuff. And perhaps the first example we've ever seen of the creation of Pizzagate is on a Reddit post. Someone's saying, I think we need to be looking at these clues for all this pizza stuff. And really from there, that's where it took off. So inside the emails, they connect a lot of different things. CP, cheese pizza, people dissect it. They think maybe it stands for child pornography. Various people on Reddit, sites like 4chan, become convinced that pizza is slang for essentially children to rape. And so then they see the exchanges with James Alephantis and John Podesta. I had emailed with John Podesta about hosting a pizza party, fundraiser, cookout at someone's house. And so people become convinced that Comet Ping Pong is like this child rape dungeon in the basement. 
this was supported by George Soros and John Podesta and Hillary Clinton, and like everybody was somehow connected to this child sex trafficking ring at a pizza parlor that you could dial up and say the right food words and get your order of children. It's just days before the election, and so tensions are high. It certainly looked like Hillary Clinton was gonna win, and so Trump people are very feverish, and this was just blowing up. So I said, geez, all these people are just going so wild about it. I wonder if anything's happening at, at Comet. So I called him up. I got a call from a guy named Will Sommer, and he at the time was working at the Washington City paper and asked me if I had read about this or know about this online conspiracy theory that Hillary Clinton and I were human trafficking from Comet Ping Pong. And I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. And I make a comment like, everyone is really up about this election and passions are high and I'm sure that it, it'll go away in a couple of days. The election happens. And then actually what happened is the day subsequent to the election, these online attacks started escalating and increasing in volume. We started to get messages onto like our Yelp page for the restaurant, reviews that were really weird and weird Facebook things. I had put pictures of my godchildren on Instagram. Now, obviously, I would know better than to put anything anywhere. But these images were stolen from my Instagram, taken and put up as some kind of evidence of nefarious activities going on. I just want you to ask yourself, why does this guy, I think he looks like he's in his late 30s, why is this coming on middle-aged guy have a photo of a random kid drinking milk? Pizzagate, like so many conspiracy theories, it starts to echo on 4chan. There are spaces that drive more extreme content. I would say 4chan is the not, a bathroom may be too polite. Think of the rest stop on the interstate highway. 4chan is a dirty restroom. There's no toilet paper in the toilet roll. The sink has not been cleaned in months. And think about the kinds of things you saw on bathroom walls there. It builds on the internet, then it starts getting picked up by various right-wing pundits. You know, Alex Jones starts promoting it all the time. Pizzagate is real. The question is, how real is it? What is it? Something's going on. Something's being covered up. It needs to be investigated. So just call it. Infowars becomes the Pizzagate network for a bit. The menu from Comet Ping Pong. Notice the symbol of the ping pong paddles and its clever resemblance to the FBI documents symbol for child love. There were so many different entry points for this specific attack. I'm trafficking or abusing these children is one. The other was that I or Hillary Clinton or the Podestas were kidnapping and selling these children to retain our immense wealth. There was some that this idea that because I'm gay, I obviously must be molesting children or something, uh, which is a historical perspective on gayness. So many of the calls we've received People saying, why do you like raping children? And being like, I know you're all gay. And that one is necessarily related to the other. A lot of what fuels misinformation and what we call fake news is hate. It is essentially some group of people either misunderstanding or having some sort of violent feelings about another group of people. And in the case of Comet, those who decided to target James found a little bit of hate and malice in the piece of Comet that is welcoming to the LGBTQ community. More and more, we started receiving phone calls that ran the gambit of being just prank calls, I almost say, where people were like, can I get a, some kind of special pizza, or some ridiculous name? Something that meant to them, something about pedophilia was code words to just straight up death threats. People saying, gonna kill you, or we know what you're doing, we're gonna stop it, you're all gonna die. We know where you live, we are coming to the restaurant, we're coming to get you, you know, you need to kill yourself. There was a specific one where someone said, I'm gonna come to your restaurant with a machine gun and kill everyone inside and like cut your guts out and watch you die on the floor or whatever. And I was like, this is scary. What I was doing every single night was going online and checking Reddit, checking 4chan. Reddit had a new subreddit that had been started specifically for Pizzagate. It went from, within a week, zero followers to 22,000 people who were subscribed to it. 
1,500 of which were active at any given point, growing and growing and growing and growing. And even if they only spend five minutes a day trying to destroy my life, 22,000 people have more five minutes a day than I have 24 hours in my day. There it is. There it is, guys. So we're, we're gonna go in and we're gonna infiltrate Comet Pizza. I got a phone call from someone who said, hey, I just wanna let you know that I'm a friend of yours and a guy named Jack Posobiec is in there filming you right now. I, I turned it off. I, I understand that I understand that to you, this is maybe like a game, but considering that I myself and my staff receive death threats It's, it's not a game, a day, it's not anything. You, are you reading these things that people are writing? I can't control what somebody posts on the internet. I read several posts on Reddit that said, I've had enough of this. If I don't post back here in three hours, it's because I've been killed. I'm grabbing my shotgun and going into Comet. We were in real deep fear, like serious fear. These threats were so violent that I, I sort of like knew something would happen. Look, I've already told you we have a duty to protect people who can't protect themselves. So it culminates with Edgar Madison Welch driving up from North Carolina. He's one of the people who's been consuming all this stuff, and he's become convinced that there really is a child rape dungeon in the basement of Comet Ping Pong. He wanted to come up here and save these children. He's a father himself. He had two young daughters. He was a classic InfoWars listener, follower. You know, people want me to look into it. I may just have to take off a week and just only research this and actually go to where these places are and stuff. In fact, I'm looking at getting on a plane. I can't just say something and not see it for myself. They go to these pizza places. There's like satanic art everywhere. Part of the pitch is get out there and help us unearth the truth. It turns people into a type of vigilante in which they're out there seeking what they think is justice. In the case of Pizzagate, a guy puts children in danger because he thinks he's rescuing children. We had this restaurant filled with families eating. Sunday afternoon, and Edgar Madison Welch walks in this front door with a loaded AR-15 assault rifle, ex fully exposed, also with like a handgun and a knife, it turned out, and like walks through this restaurant. My young staff, who had been under online attack, they immediately see him, call the police, and and go like table to table, telling each table that they need to go, like leave the building. And so each table, it's, the customers are like, oh no, we're fine. Like we're here to support you. It's okay. Like we'll just keep eating or whatever. And this, these kids are like, no, you don't understand. There's a guy here with a gun. So they evacuate the building. This isn't a joke, get out of the block. Police have shut down the street, and riot SWAT teams are closing the building and the street, and leaves this gunman alone to search the restaurant or do whatever he's going to do. The first thing that he did was immediately walk towards the back room. I'm not sure what he thought he was going to find back here, but I think that he thought that this was the place where Hillary Clinton would be, or he was going to walk back there and find John Podesta or George Soros or someone pulling things off of the wall, trying to pry apart the stage, flipping ping pong tables over. He was trying to break anything that he thought was obscuring his view. But he came over here to the only locked door in the entire restaurant, which is our employee closet. He shot through the door, which is a pretty dirty, but innocuous employee closet. Uh, houses our coats. Realized there were no children being held here. Came out of the, of the restaurant, came out with his hands up with a, to a sea of police. Hands! Hands! We got a guy coming out right now. Yeah. Stand up! We got a white male subject coming out of the location. Hands in the air. No, nobody move. Don't nobody move. Stay where you are. Bring him towards you. I got him. I can come back. Keep going. Keep coming to my voice. Do not turn around. Stop! Stop! Get 
down on your knees. Get on the ground, lay prone on the ground. Sir, do you work there? No, sir. Are you else the... in the location right now? Nobody is. Nobody else? What are you doing in the location? Making sure there's nothing there. Making sure there's nothing there. Regarding you want? Pedophile you ring. Regarding what? Pedophile ring. Pizza gate. Start on pizza gate. This could have been a lot worse. Someone could have gotten shot. Anything could have happened here. So no one, this was something that even some of the most seasoned crime reporters had never seen before. That someone came in armed for battle, came in on a suicide mission, either knowing he was going to go to jail or it might end up dead, but was willing to do that based off of fake, erroneous news stories.